will complete the topics of the physics which, which was left. And the topic which we have to continue or we have to start is the graphical representation of motion. As we have studied about the types of motion, acceleration, velocity, displacement, distance, everything we have studied in our previous videos. But today we will cover the topic that is graphical representation of motion. See, graph is a type of tool which is used to define the motion of an object. In the motion, the distance can be defined, time can be defined, or you can say velocity. So if we have to study about the relations of distance time graph or velocity time graph, first of all, we need a type of thing that is known as graph. Okay, as we all know, this is x-axis. What is this? X-axis. This one is y-axis. And this one is Z axis. This is termed as imaginary also. So this is a three-dimensional three structure of a graph. But before that, what we have to study only about the two axes, that is X axis and Y axis. What will be the nomenclature of this axis? See, this is a graph. What it is? A graph. On the x-axis, we will write down time. What we will write down? Time. And that too in seconds. That is the side unit of a time. Okay. Now, in this axis, on the y-axis, this is, we all know, origin. Okay. On the y-axis, in the case of distance time graph, what we have to write? Distance. You all know, distance is denoted by distance is denoted by s so on the y axis distance will be there on the time axis on the x axis there, there will be a time and the different coordinates we will be marking on these two graphs okay so moving further how we can calculate the speed using distance time graph what is the way out to calculate the speed see distance is given time is given as we all know Speed equals to distance upon time. Okay. Speed equals to distance upon time. Distance is given, time is given. We will calculate speed. To calculate the speed, a type of graph we use in that is distance time. Is that clear to you? Now, what is the distance time graph? How we will calculate it? See here. So students, we will study the three particular cases in the distance time graph. What are they? The first case we will study that is at rest position. What is at rest? How the body can be stationary. How the body can be stationary or it's not moving. The second one will be uniform motion. And the third one is non-uniform. So first one we will study at rest position, at uniform motion and non-uniform motion. So for the rest, for the rest position, what we have to do? Just take an example. If an object is moving, with a constant velocity then it is said to be in motion but if an object is not moving then how we can draw the graph of distance time graph suppose that an object covers in first second 25 meter see this is distance in meters and this is time in seconds so an object covers in first second 25 meters in next one second 25 meter again in third second he is on 25 meter only and in the last final second again on 25 meter so if I draw a constant line connecting all these coordinates what you will observe suppose take two coordinates as I said this one is A and this one is B so 
This is the line AB, which is parallel to the time axis. This is the line AB, which is parallel to the time axis. When any line is parallel to the time axis, there is no angle between these two lines, that is AB and the time axis. Then that body is said to be at rest. Then that body is said to be at rest. See, there is no inclination of the angle with the time axis. Is that clear? Now, if I take an, another example. If I take an example of uniform motion. So what we have to do is that for uniform motion, what we have to do? In first second, the object was at 5 meter. In the second, 10 meter. In the third second, it was on 20 and in the fourth second, it was on uh, 25. Let's say, take two coordinates. First step, what we have to do, take any of the two coordinates. As I say, mark this point as A. See, what I am going to explain is that how to calculate the speed with the help of distance time graph. And you have to go through it that mark this point as A and mark this another point as B. Okay. Now, what we can do? Take a normal to the time axis. Normal will be like this. And go through the time axis and cross it over. Next, same situation will be there for B. So, this is the time axis and you have to mark this one as P1 and this one as T2. Is that clear? As this one is T1 and this is T2, the corresponding distances will be this and this one only. So if I say this is S1, as the distance is marked in, always as noted as S1. So this one is S1 and this can be S2. Just extend it to the beyond the lines, coordinates and join these coordinates evenly. So now you can see there is a straight line which is not parallel to the time axis. It is inclined at certain angle with the time axis. Is that clear? So what you can see that these two lines are cutting at one point. There is an intersection point here and this intersection point should be marked as C. Darken this line what you can observe that this is a type of right angle triangle. This is right angle triangle. Now, just to obtain the slope of this triangle or is, you can say obtain the slope of this line, not a triangle, this line. So, that is only our desired speed. As you, we all know that the formula of speed is P equals to S upon T. That we all know. This is the base formula and we will go beyond according to this one. Is that clear? First of all, we will take the change in tag and change in tag and distance. How the change can happen? Final, I told you earlier also, final minus initial. This is our change. And what is final? See, this S2 is final and this S1 is initial. You start the S1 and you come the S2. So this is, this is final and this is initial. So final S2 minus S1. Similarly, for the time axis and the time also, the final will be T2 minus T1. That is the change. And just put down in this formula that distance, what is the change? S2 minus S1 and for the time T2 minus T1. This is our required speed which we can obtain from the distance time graph. So what we have studied, the position has stressed when the motion is not happening, the body is at rest, we are getting a straight line. But in the case when the coordinates are in a row, you can just join down the, all the coordinates, you will get a line which is not parallel to the time axis but inclined at certain. Okay? Now take two points, two coordinates, any of the two coordinates, mark it as A, B, whatever the nomenclature you can take. Just draw the normal to the time axis 
and corresponding S1 and S2 on the distance axis. Now extend this line beyond the graph plate and after that you will see there is a cross point or you can say intersection point. Mark that intersection point you will see there is a triangle and as this line is inclined at time axis that line must have some slope. If you can define that slope that is only your desired speed. So what is the formula? Speed equals to distance upon time. Put the change of distance and change of time in the formula you will get v equals to s2 minus s1 upon t2 minus t1. And what is this s2 minus s1 in uh, graph here? See s2 minus s1 this is the gap 20 minus 10 how? bc. See s2 minus s1 that is bc. t2 minus t1 t2 minus t1 see t2 minus t1 that is ac. Write down the method first again as your desired speed. Is that clear to all of you? Should I make move to next point, last point that is non-uniform motion. See, there is not, nothing great different between uniform and non-uniform. Only the difference is that the slope will be varying because the speed is varying in that case. I just, I can give you the example. Suppose that this is a graph. This is time and this is distance. If a graph is like this or you can say if a graph is like this see there is no straight line it is a curved line okay it is a curved line. So in this case of curved line the slope always vary. Slope is vary with time. See, slope is varying with time. As the slope is varying with time, so how can we obtain the slope? There will be instantaneous slopes we can obtain in a small fraction, but we can't obtain a slope like this. So, in non-uniform motion, the slope always vary, speed always vary from two coordinates or different coordinates. I think you might have understand all the things. Still, there is some problem. Feel free to contact me. Uh, in the next video, we will cover the velocity time graph as well as the circular motion and the equations of motion.